prayers, Almighty God, who in infinite wisdom and providential goodness has appointed the offices of leaders and parliaments for the welfare of society and just government of humanity, we beseech you look upon with your burden favor these your servants whom you have been pleased to call to perform the of such important trusts in this land. Let your blessing descend upon them here assembled and grant, uh, and grant that they may, as in your presence, treat and consider all matters that shall come under the deliberation in so just and faithful a manner as promote your honor and glory and to advance the good of those whose interests you have committed their charge. Amen. Amen. Item number two on the paper, communication from the chair. Honourable members, I welcome you to this uh, special sitting to pay tribute to uh, late Honourable Mary Mutagamba, former minister, former colleague here, uh, member of the ninth parliament. Uh, but at the same time, I also want to announce again with sorrow the death of another member of the ninth parliament. The Honorable Peter Omolo, which also occurred during the weekend. Uh, he was buried yesterday. Unfortunately, uh, the time did not enable us to bring him here. But uh, I want to ask members to also stand up in honor of Honorable Omolo before we start these proceedings. May his soul rest in eternal peace. Amen. members, uh, maybe they should bring the body in before we read the messages of tribute. Clerk. Okay, on our members, we have a number of messages. There's a message from the president of the Democratic Party, the Honorable uh, Nobat Mao. Uh, among other things, he says, remember has our Deputy Secretary General during the difficult period when political parties were virtually banned. We therefore joined you in mourning a distinguished leader, a woman of extraordinary courage, charisma, and solid intellect. She became nationally known when she boldly took on the challenging task of leading Dr. Paul Kawanga Semugere's presidential campaign in 1996, articulation of the campaign platform and the case against the monolithic <laughs> uh, inspired many to join Semugere's campaign. That's a message from Honorable Nobat Mao. Uh, the Aga Khan Foundation, uh, over many years, the Aga Khan Development Network and Agency, Tourism Promotion Services, have been privileged to have known and interacted with Honorable Mutagamba. She was always particularly engaging, insightful, and devoted to her career. Her long and loyal contribution to the government of Uganda will always be remembered. Signed, Fazana Sundaji, Country Manager, at the Khan Development Foundation. We also have a, another one from the Castle Chaplain of Parliament, signed by Honorable Lucy Akelo. Uh, we pray that the good Lord gives the brief family strength and the courage during this difficult time. There's another message from Honorable Rimiji Achio, Chairman Board of Trustees of the Parliamentary Pension Scheme. Uh, she has been a member of the Parliamentary Pension Scheme, and the Board of Trustees is saddened by the loss of an active member. So those are the messages so far received. Uh, the other, others coming, I'll inform you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. No. Can I bring the casket? The casket access to the chamber. Please rise as the casket to the chamber.
the anthems. Item number four on the other paper, laying of wreath on the casket by dignitaries, the following order. The first one, the right honorable speaker. His Excellency the Vice President. <laughs> the right to the Prime Minister, Head of Government Business.
the leader of the opposition. The government chief whip. The chief opposition whip. To be followed by a Minister of Water and Environment. Minister of Water and Environment. Minister of Tourism, Wildlife and Antiquities. <coughs> to be followed by Minister of Tesla Affairs. Parliamentary Commission. Uganda People's Congress Whip. Democratic Party Whip. <laughs> to be followed by Democratic Party leadership. To be followed by Dean of Independence. <laughs> to be followed by the leadership by representative of the East African Legislative Assembly members elect. Iyara members elect. Chairperson, Parliamentary Pension Scheme. <laughs> Uganda Women's Parliamentary Association.
to be followed by the parliamentary circle. Next is West Nile Parliamentary Group. Gwenzori Parliamentary Group. Next is Lango Parliamentary Group. To be followed by Busoga Parliamentary Caucus. Ankore MPs caucus. to be followed by Bugisu Parliamentary Group. Kigezi Parliamentary Group. <laughs> to be followed by the UPDF caucus. Workers, MPs. <laughs> Parliamentary Catholic Chaplaincy.
Parliamentary Forum for Climate Change. To be followed by Honorable Kasoro Haluna, MP Chotera. Honorable Kamateka Jova, Chairperson of the Human Rights Committee. Before by Honorable Lubogo Kenneth, Chairperson, Tourism, Trade and Industry Committee. Honorable Muyanja Babali, MP of Kota South. Honorable Suwi Chinyamatama Juliet, woman MUP Rakai. Representative, Representative Honorable Maria Chiwanuka. Lastly, Laka Raka Leadership Fraternity. Item number five on the other paper. Uganda Parliamentary Caucus. Item five for the other paper. Honourable members, as before we receive the tribute, I want to announce the presence of the following members in the distinguished visitors gallery. Honourable Antoine Gutele, former minister. Honourable Henry Chamber, former minister. Honourable Tasu Sikawajere, former minister. Honourable Goma Isoke, honourable minister. Vix Kingo, parliamentary aspirant. Honorable Emily Otekat, former MP. Honorable Daudi Migereko, former minister. Honorable Basmani Chinji, honorable minister. Honorable Samu Gaba, former member of parliament. Ambassador Otengo of Addis Ababa. High Commissioner Huha of Malaysia. 
Commissioner Oburu, Judicial Service Commission, Una Wakikona, former Minister, Una Wezati Wadri, former MP, Honorable Joyce Simpanga, our very, very senior woman activist, Honorable Akor uh, Yala, MP, Una Murengani, outgoing member of Yala, Honorable Mawia Adore, former member of Parliament, Honorable Ocheng, uh, from the islands of Bukhori, Ambassador Sedef of Turkey. I think that's Presidential Advisor Nkonge, I think. Yes. I'm trying to get the names of the other friends who are here. I will announce them as soon as I get them. Uh, no, but Mao, I don't know where he's seated today. Oh. Where are they? Oh, they're in that corner. Honorable Sarah Chinji Chiyama there. Thank you for coming. Honorable Kataike. Thank you for coming. Uh, I'm trying to get the names of one or two other people who are here. Uh, yes, I think those are the ones who are in the, in the gallery. Honorable Samari, he's up there. I will announce the others as, as they come. Prime Minister, can you see motion? Motion for resolution of Parliament to pay tribute to the late Honorable Maria Mutagamba, former Minister, woman MP, Rakai District. I think it's Father Tarsisio Muhereza. Yes, that's Father Tarsisio there. Uh, welcome. I'm just missing one more name, and I will announce as soon as I get it. Uh, thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Right Honourable Speaker, I beg to move a motion for a resolution of Parliament to pay tribute to Honourable Maria Rubega Mutagamba, and I'm doing this and our rules of procedure, rule number 47 uh, of this August House. Right Honourable Speaker, whereas the Parliament of Uganda received with grief the news of the demise of Honourable Maria Rubega Mutagamba, a former minister and member of Parliament, which occurred on Saturday, 24th June, 2017, at Case Hospital in Kampala, aware that Honorable Maria Mutagamba has had a distinguished career serving peop the people of Uganda dating back in 1989 when she was elected to the National Resistance Council and subsequently represented Rakai District in the Constitu Constituent Assembly, was the Deputy Secretary General of the Democratic Party, and later represented the people of Rakai in the 8th and 9th Parliament, recognizing that Honorable Maria Mutagamba greatly contributed to the political and economic development of Uganda when she held the following key positions in the government. One, Minister of State for Water. Two, Minister for Water and Environment. And three, Minister for Tourism and Wildlife. Appreciating that Honorable Maria Mutagamba was a leader who served Uganda with dedication and patriotism, now therefore, this parliament resolves as follows. One, that it collectively conveys deepest condolences to the bereaved family, relatives, friends, and the people of Uganda upon the loss of Honorable Maria Lubega Mutagamba. Two, that it takes cognizance of the dedicated service and contribution made by Honorable Maria Mutagamba to Uganda. And three, that this parliament collectively prays to the almighty God to sustain the bereaved and grant our departed colleague and friend, Honorable Maria Mutagamba, eternal peace. Right Honorable Speaker, I beg to move. Seconded. Seconded by several members of the House.
can give you a justification. I want to welcome Honorable Didi Satenya, former MP for Kawempe. You're welcome. Right Honourable Speaker, the justification for the resolution of Parliament to pay tribute to the late Honourable Maria Mutagamba. Right Honourable Speaker and colleagues, the passing on of our sister and colleague, Honourable Maria Mutagamba, on Saturday, 24th June 2017, is yet another sad loss to the country of an illustrious champion of environment protection, promotion of tourism, effective legislator, and a member of cabinet. On behalf of government and my own behalf, we convey our condolences to the family, relatives, friends, and the country at large. Right Honourable Speaker, we mourn and celebrate the life of a lady who devoted her life to protecting the environment and promoting of tourism. The country has lost an entrepreneur, economist, environmentalist, political leader, and a patriot whose dedication and service to Uganda will be greatly missed. Right Honorable Speaker, Maria Mutagamba, was born to Emilio Rubega and Koreta Nakate of Kakuto, Kochi in the present Derakai district on 5th of September, 1952. Maria Mutagamba went through St. Alozia Secondary School, Bwanda, for all level, Mount St. Mary's, Namagunga, and later joined Makere University, Kampala, graduating with a first class bachelor's degree in economics in 1976. Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, Honorable Maria Mutagamba was a patriot who believed in serving the country irrespective of one's political affiliation. Growing up in the Democratic Party, in which she served in its top leadership positions, Maria Mutagamba did not hesitate to join the National Resistance Movement to continue her service to the country and the people of Uganda. As leaders, we should emulate her example of working across the political divide in the interests of our country. Right Honorable Speaker, Honorable Maria Mutagamba had an illustrious career. She served as a financial controller with the Bank of Uganda from 1976 to 1980 and was also a director of Bank of Baroda from 1991 until 1999. She represented the people of Rakai at the district, as the district woman representative in this August House between 1989 and 1993, and was also a constituent assembly delegate between 1994 and 1995. Between 1999 and 2000, she served as the Deputy Secretary General of the Democratic Party. In 2000, she was appointed Minister of State for Water, a position she held until 2006, when she was appointed Minister of Water and Environment. From 2012 to 2016, Honorable Maria Mutagamba was Minister of Tourism, Wildlife, and antiquities. Right Honorable Speaker, Honorable Mutagamba was a tireless advocate for the environment, for women, and for all those underprivileged. 
and work to enable them to realize their potential. She advocated and led efforts for planting trees, conservation of wetlands, and helped women throughout the country to improve their lives, their families, and their communities. Maria Mutagamba understood the deep connection between local and global problems, and she helped give ordinary citizens a voice. And in fact, she only recently spearheaded the introduction of solar irrigation in order to combat drought and promote agricultural production. Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, the cause of death of Honorable Maria Mutagamba was cancer. Uh, at the time of the death, this cancer was concentrating in the liver. Honorable Mutagamba made a positive mark at every station of her life. She leaves behind a positive legacy to build on. Our duty is to ensure that her dream of empowering communities, protecting the environment, and promoting tourism lives on. May the Almighty God rest her soul in eternal peace. Thank you very much. As I invite the leader of opposition, I want to join me in welcoming a delegation from uh, Kasambira Brokers and Taxi Drivers Association on the Jinja Kamuli Road. They are here in the gallery. They had come to see their MP, but they are also here to witness the proceedings. Join me in welcoming them. <laughs> they are up there. Please stand up. Uh, they are there. Leader of Opposition. <laughs> that Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, I raised again a motion for a resolution of Parliament to pay tribute to a politician of di distinguished decorum, a parent a skillful servant, a passionate Christian, a resolute activist, but also a humble to the core. And that is Honorable Maria Vega Mutagamba. I extend my sympathies and continued prayers of comfort to the children upon the loss of a mother a few years after the demise of their dad, I pray that you will be continually consoled by the good works and evident good upbringing that your parents extended to you, the children. I can confidently say that you are way beyond the level of falling back. I don't have to speak on other members. They emphasize the academic progress and practical work experience that uh, when Mutagama possessed, did not stop her from pursuing the sometimes murky waters of politics. More so, opposition politics at the time where she rose meticulously to become the acting Secretary General of the Democratic Party. At this time, we all remember how it was almost a sign torture guarantee for one to be labeled a multipartist, as those who were opposed to the ruling regime were being referred to then. The Honorable Maria did not waver, having developed her thick skin in her youth days. Many of us grew to be told how she, among a few other students at Makere in the early 70s, organized the infamous Black Tuesday protest after the death of a student 
I need not remind the House that this was under the era of Idi Amin, the dreaded days. Her strong push for recognizing multi-party politics in Uganda during the Constituency Assembly and the eventual walkout where, where all hallmarks of a leader with a strong belief and natural desire to uphold democratic principles. It came as no big surprise, therefore, that when Onari Mutagamba was unveiled as the campaign chief for Dr. Paul Kawanga Semogere for the 1986 general elections, 1996, there were no elections in 86. The Honorable Rose Namaya and herself, a Democratic Party, bred and nurtured Kada, acknowledged in her tribute that the Honorable Mutagama's best and most uh, impacting moments were the conduct of these campaigns. It is possible that uh, the Honorable Namaya and Jafold Maria, the individual, not the NRM ideals, into the NRM. Right Honorable Speaker, as we eulogize and pay tribute to Honorable Mutagama, I wish to reiterate your call in your communication at the State of the Nation Address for the need to urgently develop a policy and possibly incorporate in our rules of procedure an agreed and defined categorization of who must be brought to this House once departed. Yesterday we were faced with the wrath of the people of Soroti to explain why their son, the Honorable Peter Omoro, was never brought to this house, no matter which you have addressed the Honorable Speaker at the beginning of this session. So the same voices came through from even under the death of Honorable Deo Ruavita weeks ago. We must be seen to accord all our departed comrades, equal honors without exception and excuses of time and family consultation. I believe that every family would wish to have a national honor to their foreign member. In the death of Honorable Mutagamba, we should pick lessons, lessons for those of us left behind. When Mutagamba was a pillar of the opposition politics against the current regime until late 1990, 99, when she opted to join hands with NRM. She quietly settled in and gave her all to develop her constituency and also make a mark in the respective ministries where she was uh, appointed. Maria never returned to the Democratic Party or the opposition in general to torment, deny great, and or spy on those she had left behind. She continued to hold all with respect, dignity, and love. Not like many people who join, sometimes even for issues of butter and bread. And then they want to give an impression that where they have been is worse. Where they have been for 40 years, 30 years. I have seen here sometimes uh, students and uh, youth leaders um, who were <clears throat> nurtured by your body. They only remembered him upon his death. I am happy the doc doctor was going to share the committee for the funeral of Dr. Uh, Milton Obote. She engaged more in policy guidance to her dockets than politicking. Amid this timiga, Budget provisions. When Mutagamba steered the development of the Uganda Tourism Master Plan, among the many interventions that made the tourism potential of this country visible, she is further credited for the tremendous increased self water coverage in parts of this country. When Mutagamba never got her hands dirty with the politics of intrigue and deceit, may those colleagues on the other side, especially those who crossed not very long ago, Learn from this good astute lady and take their newfound love with some pinch of caution. And avoid, avoid burning the bridges that helped them to be identified as potential recruits. When I Mutagamba, your efforts through the Rakai Development Association that brought to the fore the plight of the people of Rakai as far as the AIDS scourge was concerned was commendable. Many widows and orphans were cared for and given a new lease of life. Your efforts, as further seen through the Mama Water Africa that focused on supplying water to over 18 districts in this country, were commendable. As a living tribute, government should fully fund and implement the Uganda Tourism Master Plan 
the potential for turning the fortunes of this country. This master plan is one of the major accomplishments of the Honorable Mutagamba when she was responsible for that sector. Honorable Mutagamba, your eyes are closed, your life curtain has drawn, your legacy will shine on, especially to those who value humility, dedication, and commitment. Right, Honorable Speaker, I beg to second the motion. Thank you very much. As I invite the coordinator for the independence, I just want to ask the Prime Minister that I would, wa I would want to create room to pay tribute to the following uh, foreign members, the Honorable Yudi Akwizera of Kisoro, the Honorable Deo Ravita of Ibanda, the Honorable Peter Omolo. Even though the bodies will not be brought here, let us pay tribute so that the hand and the tribute can be given to their families. And now, Honorable Ria Yanga, let's serve the independence first. Right, Honorable Speaker, I stand here to second the motion to pay tribute to the late Honorable Maria Mutagamba. The family and friends of Honorable Maria Mutagamba, colleagues in the August House, I wish to express my most profound and sincere sympathies to you all as we mourn our colleague and compatriot, Honorable Maria Mutagamba. Please take comfort in knowing that the Lord who gives, he is the same Lord who takes at an appointed time he wants. Dr. Maria Mutagamba, Uganda former minister for tourism, wildlife, and antiquities, served diligently, knowledgeably, proficiently in her various roles as indicated in area eulogies. Today we say farewell to a woman of many talents and abilities and very many firsts, as mentioned earlier. She broke the barriers of the stereotypes that were labeled and continue to be labeled on women. She did not allow nor conform to the biases against women in the 1960s through to the 1980s, but rather rose above them and became an economist who later on turned into a politician to reckon with. Through her unequivocal commitment and professionalism, Dr. Mutagamba swiftly earned the water and the environment industry respect. She brought Africa Travel Association Annual Congress to Uganda in 2014, and then served as the organization president until the Congress in Nairobi a year later. During her presidential year, she helped to put Uganda on the map of American travel agents and tour operators, where she made a big impact through her professionalism and personal charm. It was during her term of office when a Ugandan canary specialist, known as Lorex, Rolex. the Rolex came to be known as a tourism attraction and earned international fame and was named a tourism product made in Uganda and only made in Uganda. It can't be, it can't be found anywhere else. Honebu Mutagamba was a unique politician who served her time at a, as a noble politician but later still Order. knew Order. but later still became a person who knew to retreat when it was right, at the right time. She retired on her own preference in 2016 from elective politics after serving as a constituent assembly delegate and became and later served as a member of parliament and later became a minister. And perhaps, honorable members, her life can serve as a lesson to all of us who are political leaders, that there comes a time when one needs to allow for a peaceful transition to take place, regardless on how good a leader you have been. I had the pleasure. I had the pleasure. Indeed, on, on, on the time is right, I'll do it. 
I had the pleasure to sit with Honorable Mutagamba in the ninth parliament, where I was still a fresher. She encouraged me to be strong, willed, and principled, to always speak out on the good and desist from, from temptation to be corrupted by power. She spoke with conviction and her ever calm and mother in her ever calm and motherly manner, she gave me and many of us, I'm sure, the words of encouragement. Fare thee well, Honorable Maria Mutagamba. You have run a good race and fought the good fight. I beg to move. Thank you very much. Uh, let's have Honorable Aruna Kasolo three minutes. Honorable Kalimba three minutes, then we'll go to the mem other members. These are the movers. Thank you, thank you very much, Patronable Speaker, and the colleagues, members of Parliament. Patronable Speaker, the late, the late Honorable Dr. Maria Rwega Mutagamba, as indicated by the Prime Minister, the motion mover, was a member of parliament representing the people of Rakai with me in ninth parliament. We worked together. She was such a secure leader who could always fight for peace, unit, and uh, in fact, in Rakai, she was a uniting factor, as you are aware. In so many districts, there are always misunderstandings between local leaders and national leaders. But that was not the case in Rakai district because of the late Honorable Maria Rwega Mutagamba. Honorable Maria Rwega Mutagamba was the first female graduate in Kakuto Sabu County. She inspired so many girl children to go to school. As you may recall, in the 80s, we had a challenge of HIV AIDS. But people could think, people would think that uh, HIV AIDS is actually bewitchable. That uh, they could go to witch doctors. But it was Honorable Maria Rwegamatagamba together with her colleagues then, Mr. Vincent Semakula Setuva, Brigadier Kayanja, who formed an association, ALADA, and he started to outsource for development partners who came to Rakai, uh, NGOs, World Vision, Danida, Concern, and other development partners to sensitize our people that this is a disease and the, it is through such and such ways. I believe that if it was not Honorable Maria Begum Tagamba, personally, for instance, I, mean, I mean, wouldn't be here. Right to never, right to never, right to never, right to never speaker. Whenever the Algerian Tagamba was a true Catholic political leader who trusted her God. In fact, given her name, he used, she used to say that she has her fighter, the, the Lady Maria. Yes. 
when, when, when I visited her in Kes Clinic, she held my hand and said, many players, Catholic players, Chitafari Muguru, Really, she was very weak, but she managed to save those players. And I believe that it is because of that character that she has not appeared in the papers, even ungenuine papers, <laughs> that she has been, she has not been found in any corruption scandal. She has been in public offices, many public offices, for years. But her name has never been cited in any corruption scan. I think it's because she was a true uh, Catholic leader. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, Uh, the late Honorable Dr. Maria Begum Tagamba has had a passion for tourism. She was very passionate. Even when she actually excused herself from elective politics, she remained a tourism ambassador. When Honorable Chiwanda uh, brought uh, Rolex drive. Many short-sighted Ugandans talked bad about this program. But whenever Dr. Maria Rubegamutagamba offered the hospital to spear him, Half a minute to conclude. Thank you, mm. Right Honorable. To spearhead the process of promoting Lorex as a tourist attraction in Uganda. You see, tourism is not about big things, but it is about packaging. The way you package your thing attracts tourists. So, uh, Right Honorable, even the the, the, the Miss Tourism. I'm sorry, Miss Tourism. Miss Tourism entirely was the effort of Honorable Dr. Maria Begamotagam. Finally, right Honorable, I thank the President for giving Honorable Maria Begamutagamba an opportunity to serve her country. I would also thank the uh, Parliament and people of Rakai for supporting uh, the late Dr. Maria Begamutagamba. Let me also request colleagues to turn up in good numbers tomorrow while we send off our colleague uh, in Kakuto because it will actually uh, help us to walk with the talk. Because if you don't appear, it will indicate that you have not appreciated what Dr. Maria Lubagamutagamba uh, performed. Thank you very much. Uh, right on, I will. Uh, speaker, I beg to second the motion. Thank you. Honorable Karemba, three minutes followed by Honorable Mary Karoro, Honorable Namuyangu, Honorable Kawoya. Let's have some female voices. We have had a lot of male voices. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Light Honorable Speaker. Three minutes. Honorable Members, I stand here to second the motion. I represent Kakuto County, where Mutagamba comes from. We come from the same South County. 
She's born from Gamba village, Kakuto parish, and Kakuto sub county, and the county. And on behalf of the people of Kakuto, and on my own behalf, I extend my sincere condolences to the bereaved family and the entire country. Because Maria has been a mentor, has been a parent, and has been a dedicated servant. And she has been very committed. In fact, as the minister was saying, she was a mediator. Almost, most conflicts, she didn't like that. That is why she was not involved in selecting or supporting the member of parliament who to repress her. She just kept quiet, we went in politics, and the people exercised their powers and elected Honorable Juliet without our, her influence. And uh, Honorable Maria also, we had the problems in Rakai and Kakuto in particular because that is where HIV AIDS started. But as, and the transport, the roads were not good during that time, they formed a group which was called Lakai Three Stars. The membership was the late Honorable Pinto, the late Honorable Mutagamba, and the Brigadier Eric Ayanja. They brought buses to help people move from Kampala to Mitukula and Kasense, the landing site. It was their initiative. Then they formed the Lakai District Development Association, where many NGOs came to support. During that time, we had child-headed families, which needed support, and the people were breathing in witchcraft. The AIDS, they thought that it was witchcraft coming from Tanzania. People had stolen fish. But when NGOs came, they sensitized people. And they started to know and to go to hospitals and to test because they were not believing that it is not witchcraft. So our effort helped our people. And the many orphans were supported and they went to school. And we have many, many educated Ugandans in Kakuto because of our efforts. Honorable Maria Mutagamba, after starting that development association, they started, she initiated the start of the women groups. It was like a development association, they brought Danida, and Danida gave us money, Danida Rural Credit Scheme, which is still a revolving fund, and it is still in Centenary Bank. As we get a new district, I think it will be shared among Lakai and and the Chotera district. So, but he, she initiated that, and the funds were brought, and they are still many, many groups. And up to now, if you come to Kakuto, we have many groups, saving and credit societies, all over in the villages. Like in our parish, Kakuto parish, we have over 100 women groups. They sit on Honorable Okurut, uh, as she comes, I want to announce the uh, message from the parliamentarian circle. They say we shall miss her for her gentleness, outgoing personality, constructive ideas, and commitment to development of the cooperative movement. They will contribute one million shillings, but it's not here, but it's the letter. I also want to announce the message from the IALA uh, elected members. Uh, they thank her for her contribution to tourism, the water and environment. And they have contributed 500,000 shillings. That one I have, it is here. Honorable Kurut, then Honorable Namuya. Yeah, right, Honorable Speaker and Honorable colleagues. I also stand Three here minutes. to support the motion and to give my very deep condolences to the family. Nobody can stand in the gap right now. It is only God who can do it. May He comfort you. Right, Honorable Speaker and colleagues. Maria was a great woman. She was great in every way that you looked at her. When you consider her education, her education was not a missed call. So as we stand here, 
We are celebrating the success of the girl child who has been educated. And the beauty about Maria is that she never pushed her education. She never pushed her brilliance down people's throats. She never boasted. And yet she had a first class degree. Right, Honorable Speaker and colleagues. Whatever degree you get at Makerere, you only need those papers when you are looking for a job. After that, what matters is the degree you get in life. And apart from her first class, the degree she got in life is also a first class degree. Because she was measured. She was measured. She was self-respecting. She was disrespectful of people who had bad manners. She would tear them off. I could mention one or two, but for her sake, I will keep quiet. <laughs> but right, Honorable Speaker, it is very important that before people can respect you, you respect yourself first. And that was Maria. She was a great woman. She did not stop at that. For us in cabinet, she walked the extra mile. She would call you and ask you, are you okay? And if you said you are not okay, she would say, I will say a novena for you. That was Maria. And God must have received her well. Because her religion, her belief was not merely cosmetic. It flowed in her blood. Right, Honorable Speaker, we all remember the zeal and charisma that she put in the Ministry of Tourism. She made Uganda more visible than it was. She spoke from the heart. She was genuine. One time she asked me for us, you know, and she said, Maria, be careful. When you bear that name, when you wear that name, Maria, because we are the mothers of you know who. <laughs> so she said, be very careful to keep that respect because of that name. She kept it. But the way she carried on in the Ministry of Tourism, making Uganda visible, one time she asked me, she said, what else apart from our foods can we do? I said, you know, apart, you know, the Uganda, that Rwombo. And she told me, she said, you know, Maria, if I stay in this tourism ministry, I'm going to market the Rwombo because it is very special. So she used to look out for those things that are very special. She has left a legacy. And we shall remember her with fondness. Maria, you kept the faith. In everything you did, Maria, you kept the faith. And the crown of victory awaits you. May God rest your soul in eternal peace. Thank you. Namu namu yangu. Namu yangu. And if I can wait, I'm sick of it. I get back to the other members. Ah, uh, thank you, Right Honourable Speaker and Honourable Colleagues. I rise to support the motion to pay tribute to my senior comrade. Right Honourable, I had an opportunity to serve in the Ministry of Water and Environment with my senior colleague. And I was blessed that I was replacing her as Minister of State for Water. She mentored us because that was a new ministry in 2006. And His Excellency had put all the three ministers, women. This is a ministry which had only a directorate with very small buildings. But Maria told us we're not going to rent space anywhere. We're going to sit in those small buildings and build our own office. As we talk now, those who have gone to Luzira, where the Minister of Water and Environment is, there is a building.
Right Honorable Speaker, Honorable Maria said, Minister of Water and Environment was a family. And she came up with an idea that to bring this family together, every Friday we would have tea together, all of us, in our compound. And this made us to know each and every body working in that ministry at whatever level. And I'm told it is still there. That was Maria. Maria Mutagamba came up with an idea that every Monday we would meet as top management to review what we have achieved a week before and also to look at our targets for that week. And it worked very well because all of us came to, to understand the ministry better. You do not say my sector is water and therefore I have no business in environment. No. We all became very, very informative about the entire water and sanitation sector. We also gave ourselves an opportunity to sensitize people about sanitation matters. We said you cannot talk about water without making sure that sanitation is handled. My senior colleague would personally lead us to go and clean the town of Luzira, Chirembe. Chirembe, yes. And one time I remember, she was picking garbage. And there were some ladies who were seated eating sugar cane. When she picked the rubbish, the lady threw another piece and said, Nachino jango chijewo. Literally meaning, remove this also. Maria did not take offensive. She went and picked that rubbish. And then she walked to those two ladies and started sensitizing them about the benefits of sanitation. Half a minute, half a minute. But Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Maria had passion for water. And her proposal was that other than going for water points, the boreholes, we should go out to do bulk water transfer. Provide the mouth purpose water for the people of uh, Kochi, which is water stressed from Lake Kachera, provide water to the people of Isinjiro, to the people of Mbarara from Lake Kagera, River Kagera, and other areas. I want to pray that these dreams, even tree planting, she had an idea that we should engage the students, undergraduates, and all the students who have completed but they are not yet in gainful employment to plant trees and we mobilize money and pay them so that we vegetate our degraded forest reserves. I want to pray that for the memories of this gallant lady to keep with us, we would name the Minister of Water and Environmental Headquarters after her. Oh, would you have the building, yes, Maria House. And this would dawn on the memories of politicians and technical people to ensure that whoever goes there knows that the dream for Maria was Honorable Anifa Masiko, then I go to Franca Arum Segona. Then I go to the independence. I'm coming. Yes, I've seen you all. <laughs> uh, Your name, you'll come last. You're the owner. Yeah, don't worry. Thank you so much, Madam Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I raised to support the motion in paying tribute to our friend, our sister, Dr. Maria Mutagamba. Right Honorable Speaker, 
I came to know Maria in 1980s. And this was during the no rule, no work time. I was a very young activist, very young. And uh, during that time, I was among the young activists who were arrested, you can imagine. And it was Maria Mutagamba who came and pleaded for me. And she said, uh, this young lady, she's not a Muganda by uh, uh, association. In actual fact, she belongs to the government and I was released. And from that time, I really knew quite a heart Maria had and I never looked back. I met Maria once again during the time of CA. Of course, she had her briefs and I had also my political briefs at that time. She tried all her best to bring me together so that I could agree with her whatever her vision was and we remained friends. And uh, I had time to work in Rakai district as a deputy at DC again. I met her. She took me throughout the whole district and we became friendly. Again, we joined together. In uh, 1996, I wanted to test her charisma. She was so fanatic in looking for votes for her presidential candidates, uh, Honorable Semo Gerere, and I was looking for mine, of course, the president, Lower Kagutam Seven. At no time did we clash, and we could sit together, and I found her as a good political mentor, and up to now. Madam Speaker, there is something that touched me, and that's why I came here. That uh, I have six people who perished in the road accident in Masaka from my village. Four are being buried, but I've been with them, and the two will be buried tomorrow. And this gave me an experience what an MP is. Every responsibility of the six members is on my shoulder and a few members. But I wanted to come here and say one word or two to testify how religious Maria was. She convinced me, and I went to Israel with her. She was so religious that she dragged me to River Jordan to be dipped there. Order, order. And uh, when you reach there, they tell you, you, they dress you in white gowns, you move, you reach the river near the bank, then you just say the words you want to say. Then they say, ah, ah, I found myself dipped. And I went down one, two, three. When I come out, she said, praise the Lord. And that was Maria. I was touched. She didn't stop there. She took me to the wedding wall, then to the bridge, wishing bridge. Then she took me to those other religious things. Jesus here. And you know, I'm a Muslim, and I was a Muslim even that time. And I felt how touched she was that despite of our different religious beliefs, she just took me there to accept that we have only one road, who is the almighty road, and that all the road is one. And I, uh, from that time, I was impressed. Lastly, lastly, I am concerned by my very, very good government. At what stage does the government come in? Minute. Okay, half, half a, minute. a minute. Half a minute. Right, Honorable Speaker, you know, for me, when I say a spade is a spade, and when I say I am disappointed with my government, I mean it. I am so perturbed. At what stage does government come in? I didn't hear it in the Prime Minister's uh, statement with due respect. To come in and hear it, it's cutters the senior cutters at the time of need before they depart from here. Some of you will have a time like my colleague has had a time. 
but take my experience me and Ifa. Whereas maybe time will not allow me to be brought here, the Muslims will be saying it is time to go. And the Christians are saying we go to Parliament, give our tributes when we are still alive. And help us in each and every manner when we still need, especially any treatment. We keep quiet here, but we are suffering quietly. Treat us when we are still alive. Maria, you walked the talk. You have battled all the journey. You are smile that you wore and you are wearing today. May the good Lord rest your soul in eternal peace. Honorable Winfred Masiko, then Honorable Frank Akelo. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to pay tribute to Honorable Maria Mutagamba. I came to know her during the Constituent Assembly days, and um, I remember that we sat in one committee where we protected the entrenchment of the affirmative action in the Constitution. She worked diligently, and we made sure that that was protected, and I'm glad it has yielded very positive results in this country. Uh, I have so much talk about her, but just a few things that I'll raise. One of the areas is that she had a passion for environment and climate change. I want to remind us that uh, during the, I think the 35th co conference of parties that, was, that took place in Copenhagen, Maria sat for three days and three nights without sleep, trying to negotiate to come out with an agreement. Unfortunately, we didn't get, we didn't manage to get the agreement that we had planned for, but at least she worked hard to make sure that the issues of loss and damage and climate change adaptation were included in the negotiation text. She worked very hard on that, and re I think that is something that we need to recognize her for. She brought so many, many meetings in Uganda in the areas of environment. Prominent is uh, the, co the inter IPCC meeting, the Intergovernmental Panel on co climate, climate Change. Uh, she made sure that the science was brought to Uganda and relayed the science behind climate change, and that brought Uganda to a very high footing. You will all recall that she was the president of the African Minister's uh, Council on Water, AMCAO. And during her time, she made sure that she worked very hard to, to raise the regional integration issues. She worked very hard on, what, on issues of water and sanitation and irrigation. She, she talked prominently about, about many issues that affect third world countries. And during her presidency, Uganda managed to get a lot of money and resources uh, to, to, that came and helped our country. Honorable Mutagamba was very hardworking. She worked so hard that even when she was in, in, in our meetings, because at one time I chaired the Natural Resources Committee, but every time she appeared before us, she had an answer. She was clear-headed. She always respected members of parliament. There is not even one single day that you go to the office of the minister, then Miriam Mutagamba, and you fail to get her. She welcomed us, she listened to our problems, and she considered most of them. I, I really believe uh, one thing, honorable speaker, I just wanted to, to say that if we are going to look at her legacy and mm -hmm. it keeps a positive impact on this country, we need to bring out the national irrigation policy. The National Irrigation Policy Strategy and Action Plan, which she wanted very much, should be put in place so that we can remember her good works and her good works keep uh, a positive mark in this country. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Can I add the National Tree Planting Days? Which everybody has forgotten. Honorable Akelo, Arum, Segona, then I got the independence and come here. Thank you, Madam Speaker. You're here. You're here. Don't worry, you're all here. You're on my list. <laughs> Yes, I'm yes, you are there, you are there. Yes. Honorable Franca, I'm coming that side. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to, to, to say a testimony about the life of the late Honorable Maria Mutagamba. I met her in the 8th Parliament when uh, I, I became a member of Parliament and uh, 
she was a minister. I really wanted to testify that she was one of the ministers that stood out because I want to testify that she would answer telephone calls of members of parliament. This is something which is very rare with ministers, Madam Speaker. She would respond to every call you make. She would respond to every letter you write in her ministry. I want to testify that my district, Agago, benefited a lot when she was a minister of water. Madam Speaker, I went several times when she was a minister of water, together with her colleague, Honorable Jennifer. They really made that ministry a, 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 a ministry for members of parliament. Because whenever we would go, you, 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 are not, you, you are not sat there to wait. She would give priority to members of parliament. And whenever you address an issue with her, she will want to follow. And whenever she sees you in the corridors of parliament, my sister, I hope your issue is on. Please, please keep reminding me. And here I want to testify that the communities of Lapuano sub-county in my district, the communities of uh, Ayue, the communities of Latiling today will remember this great woman lying before this parliament because she was able to let them drink water on personal, because when I wrote to her, she felt so uh, passionate about the issue and acted immediately. And within three months, water was provided in these three communities. That is, Madam Speaker, one of the reasons why I had to drive to come back to say bye-bye to Maria Mutagamba, bye-bye, we shall meet there. then Segona, then Mukitale Abala, then I cross the side. Thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. I also rise to pay tribute to the late Honorable Maria Mutagamba. Right Honorable Speaker, the late Maria was a very humble person who respected everybody, irrespective of age, irrespective of your political party, and irrespective of whether you were new in parliament or not. The the person you are seeing on the screen, right honorable speaker, is the side that will remain uh, on my, uh, in my mind forever and ever. Because I remember, as a member representing Oyam district, I went to her office in regards to human wildlife conflict. And re re she received me with those smiles that you are, you are seeing uh, on the screen. And that is what I will continue remembering, and that is the person that we are paying tribute today. Right honorable speaker. The late Maria was very passionate, dedicated, and patriotic in her work. And she really left a mark. She only did not leave a mark in politics or in her Christianity, but also she left a mark in Oyam district, more especially in Lower Sub County. I remember I went to her office complaining about the elephants killing the people of Oyam. No sooner had she scheduled to go to Oyam than the elephants killed four people at a go. And she did not take any time. She traveled up to the district, up to Loro, sub-county, in a very remote area. And when we were visiting the bereaved families, somebody saw a very big bull and shouted, elephant, elephant, elephant. We all took off faster than we reached there. And she was a very brave woman. We were able to recollect, and she continued with her work up to the end. And Madam Speaker, the people of that area, one of them rang me the other day asking whether the other woman, the other strong woman who came to really uh, see the people who were killed was the one who was dead. Then I said yes. So on behalf of the people of Oyam, I want to really uh, thank her and also thank her people and say that as politicians, as Christians, and even as a family that she has left behind, we should carry the candle and let it continue burning by emulating whatever good things that she did to this country, to our family, and to this parliament, and as a minister. I want to thank you for this. Then I come this side. Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. I've got you all on my list, as many as possible. 
Right, Honorable Speaker, I rise to support the motion and to thank the Prime Minister for moving the same. I am speaking about somebody I knew in two capacities. The first needs explanation, but the second is that she was my neighbor in our village in Nakasozi, Budo. But I also knew her when I was still a young man when she worked with my father in Radisa. And she used uh, to visit her home, we used to visit her. She told me she had a pact with my father where my father told her if she did not belong to our clan, she would have, he would have produced a husband for her. Yeah. And then subsequently, she told me, notwithstanding that we, be, we belong to the same clan, I was that husband. And that's how we referred to each other, my wife and my husband. By coincidence, because of her father's name, she was also a beggar like me. I grew up seeing her in the Democratic Party where I was a young member, consenting below age. When she was our Secretary General and when she led our campaign in 1996, at a time when I was in my senior six. I remember vividly on the 27th day of August 2008, when I had left some mini prison in Chenjojo, she visited me when she was a minister. And I asked her whether she would not be sacked for visiting a fugitive and a suspect of terrorism and prison. And she said she would rather lose a job than losing a portion of her history. And she said she owed this not to me, but to my father. In our village, when she was Minister for Water, she laid a campaign for the extension of water into Nabingo, and the project started thanks to my, my uncle, Professor Ephraim Kamun, to where we're expecting the project to extend to Maya. She laid a campaign of training the young people in agriculture, especially in the art of rearing fish and pigs in our village. She would come and collect a group of young people and train them on how to work. She was a very hardworking woman. At times we celebrate lives ritualistically, but we're here to eulogize somebody of substance. And I thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, and the government for allowing her an opportunity despite having retired. Finally, I teased her in 2011 when she had retired from the parliamentary seat or parliamentary politics in Rakai. I said, now my wife, how are we going to survive? And she told me, people must learn to retire. So she asked me, when are you retiring? And my answer was obvious, that the man I am pursuing had started showing signs of retiring, and that when he finally retires, I will equally retire. <laughs> I am not about to tell the name of the man, but there are suspicions of the person which means the signs are working and they are visible that he will retire. So we're here to thank God for a life well lived of the Honorable Maria Nakalema Rubega Mutagamba. May her soul rest in eternal peace. Remember, as Honorable Mkitale comes, I've got you, don't worry. I've got you. Honorable Mkitale comes, I want to announce the presence of Honorable Kevin Ataka, former member of Parliament for Busia Municipality. And the Honorable Peter Muturu is a former MP and also former chairman of Mpiji. There he is. Is the chairman of Mpiji now? Congratulations. Thank you for coming. Mukitale. Then uh, Abala. I get uh, Anywa. Uh, Anywa, then I come here. Then I get you the last round. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Speaker and Honorable Prime Minister, for moving. The motion on behalf of people of Belize I represent in Parliament and the mother Bunyoro Kingdom, I would like to mourn 
and celebrate at the same time the life of my mother-in-law, Maria Mutagamba. When I met her, she was together with the, the late Matian Subuga. And I was surprised as a nation builder that the former Secretary General was together with the, the Secretary General of DP then in harmony. And I was humbled. The, I was introduced to her as the son-in-law of uh, Rwanda, Vira Maria, because she was very close to the, my in-laws of the greater massacre then, before it became the small districts it is today. And um, I, she, she then continued referring to me as son-in-law, and I called her mother-in-law. Maria Mutagamba gives us possibly a lesson as a country to correct the distortion of our history and more so demonization of the political parties. Maria is one of those who comes from the nurturing of political parties and has done a good job. And I'm sure there are many uh, you've seen from UPC, from DP. We have a difficult to tell our children that actually political parties did nurture a lot of leaders. And yet we have been saying that political parties were a problem. I think the problem was not political parties, but something else. And therefore, the Tennis Parliament has a responsibility for me as an advocate of national dialogue to look into that area so that we rewrite our history, uh, the true documentation. Otherwise, we may have a problem to talk about political parties when we have demonized them. Maria Mutagamba was not a minister fighting backbench efforts of motions, of resolutions. Madam Speaker has just talked about the Tree Planting Act. When we were in Natural Resources Committee, Maria Mutagamba supported me with uh, Florence E. B. Kwao and Farida Kasasa Honorable to move a resolution of parliament to urge government to operationalize Tree Planting Act and find the money. She even supported it in the caucus. Supported this as Natural Resources. Win Musk was the, was the, was the chair. But when we came on the floor here, it was shut down by a minister who did not know that we had actually gone through a lot. It is 2009 to date. Cabinet has not brought that. So I would like to, Madam Speaker, as we, we pay tribute, that allow me bring that motion this week so that what she had agreed, as we are suffering, suffering from drought and, uh, and starving, because of climate change and drought, that we could put in place a good tree planting act 2003, which is collecting dust without being operationalized. Madam Speaker, just one last. Honorable oh, Barbara, no, honorable oh, members, you know, these are going very far, they are going by road. I, I can no longer extend time. Now I've got two minutes. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Madam Speaker. I want to thank you so much for including me, for giving me the opportunity to say, uh, to say a few things, a few words about uh, our senior who has actually left us here. And then I also want to thank you for including Honorable Omolo Peter. Yesterday, when we were burying him in the Soroti, we were bound to have chaos. In fact, we were going to have chaos yesterday. There was chaos yesterday. Yesterday, we were there in Soroti yesterday. Because he was not brought here. In March this very year, Honorable Kemo Willie was also brought here. And uh, yesterday it was a bit challenging for us, members of parliament, uh, from Teso, because that's the last time uh, Willie was not brought here. At the same time now, uh, 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 Omolo has not been brought here. But I'm happy that you have decided to include their names in the list. That's why I'm very, very happy and excited on behalf of the people of Teso. I'm very happy, Madam Speaker. Secondly, when you look at the Honorable Mutagamba here, she has done a, a, an excellent job in this country. Everybody knows that. In water, in the environment, in the tourism. Without a, 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 a trace of corruption in the job she did. That's why I'm actually very, very happy. That's the reason why I'm here. I've been following her critically, mm, uh, critically, understanding what was happening in her office. 
not like this day, this days whereby in some offices things are concealed and a lot of trouble when you enter inside. Allow me, Madam Speaker, to read some verse in the Bible because she's a Christian. Revelation chapter 14, Revelation chapter 14, verse 13 says, Then I heard a voice from heaven say, Write, write this, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. From now on, yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor, for their deeds will follow them. I want to request, Madam Speaker, member of parliament here, as we are here deliberating, they do the right things. Even those people in those offices being ministers, my advice to you, do the right things. Those, 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 good words, those good deeds will actually follow you the day when you are going to be buried. Then we honor Bokamon to the successor minister who will get three minutes. I'm here now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, right honorable speaker. On behalf of the people of Kitgo Municipality, I send my sincere condolences to the family of the late Maria Mutagamba, my sister. Right honorable speaker. I worked with the late Honorable Mutagamba as a shadow minister in the 8th parliament, in the 9th parliament, we have been working with the Honorable Mutagamba. Right Honorable Speaker, members have described the late, but working relationship, when I encountered my sister Maria as a shadow minister, the first one was over Mabira Forest. Yeah. <laughs> and as much as in the public, it was a, a lot of disagreement, we agreed behind the scene that it is the way to go. But because of her position as a minister, she couldn't go beyond that. But right, Honorable Speaker, my working relationship with Maria, my alternative policies, most of them, she took them very passionately and actually implemented them. I was on the Committee of Natural Resources. And right honorable speaker, whenever we meet with Maria, we cannot bypass each other. She will tap you and say, Mwana wa Maria, the daughter of Maria. We as Catholics, we had a special relationship with her. So this is the lady we are here paying tribute. I'm happy that despite my sickness, I'm able to come and testify that her soft and passionate relationship across the house has made some of us really think. Unlike where you find uh, the sitting ministers look at the other side of the house, the opposition, as they have no value to add, Maria never took anything for granted. Madam Speaker, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak about Honorable Maria Mutagamba, my predecessor. And I want to thank the Right Honorable Prime Minister for the motion paying tribute to Honorable Mutagamba. Colleagues, the country has lost one of the best leaders, leaders that serve with the dedication and commitment, leaders who serve those they represent with such a care, with such a t detail, leaders who, if you want to categorize them, Mutagamba exemplified what they call servant leaders, leaders who didn't come to be served but leaders who came to serve. This is Mutagamba, and Mutagamba showed leadership talents at a very early stage. Those who followed her, and I have done so. Whether she was in school, she was a leader. At her place of work, in the Bank of Uganda, she was a leader. In the political field, Mutagamba was a leader. A leader with passion, a leader with passion and honesty. I served Mutagamba 
with Mutagamba both in parliament and in cabinet and had the, the fortune of serving after him in after her in the Ministry of Water. Mutagamba served the Ministry of Water for nearly 16 years. And by the time I came, she was popularly known as Mother Water because she had become a mother to the water fraternity. She served for nearly 16 years. At the time I came to serve, there was almost a riot in the Ministry of Water when she was reshuffled. And yes, there was almost a riot. There was almost a riot in the Ministry of Water. The whole of Raqqa didn't want Mutagamba to be reshuffled. But it's ironical. By the time she left the Ministry of Tourism, there was al almost also a riot because people didn't want Mutagamba to leave the Ministry of Tourism. Wherever she served, she really distinguished herself, as you can see. In water, they loved her, they didn't want to go. In tourism, where they saw, you know, when she came to ministry, it was so funny because I was there as well. Raka, I rioted. He said, how can our minister, our member of parliament, be minister of tourism? You know, the mindset of most Ugandans towards tourism Either tourism is a, a ministry of leisure, it's not very birds, crocodiles, reptiles. They don't regard it as a serious ministry. No, they really don't. But Mutagamba, during the time she served this ministry, she had turned this round, and the Ministry of Tourism today is the leading foreign exchange earner, actually earns more than any sector in this country. She's employing a lot of people, and contribution to GDP is almost 10%. The ministry is really moving, and thanks to Mutagamba's contribution. Well, I only had earned, as my colleague referred to me, in the Ministry of Water, I only served three and a half years, and it was, I was only uncle water, so I could not have come to the level of Mutagamba to be father water, because she was really mother water. <laughs> Fantastic lady. Well, Mutagamba was not only a national leader. At the international level, Mutagamba was a president of African Ministers Council on Water. She was also coordinator of the Global Women Leader Forum for Water and Sanitation. She was the vice chairperson of the United Nations Task Force on Integrated Water Resource Management. Okay, half a minute to conclude. No, well, th minister. Th thank you so much. All I can say, the country has lost. For those she has left behind, we have a challenge to build on her legacy. May her God rest her soul internal life. Ona musumba two minutes. Ona ba kavuli ndi two minutes. Then I go to Miguel Bogorovi, Uopa, then Nyakecho. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, there are many things one can say and many things have been said about Honorable Mutagamba. But for me, I will only say one of the attributes that I witnessed is the attribute of humility. The Honorable Maria Mutagamba was a woman of humility. And I will demonstrate this by an experience that I went through. There was a process, it has now become a process, of discussing and negotiating the sharing of the Nile waters among the states that do share the Nile waters. And a key meeting was taking place in Egypt, Kai. And Maria Mtakamba, for all the years 
was the minister who was representing this republic in those negotiations. We are talking about the negotiations that have just peaked in Kampala uh, by a summit. In a, a few days, even when the meeting had begun, we got instructions. I was then in a, a Minister of State in Foreign Affairs. We got instructions from the President that negotiations should be headed, that the matter of the Nile waters Madam, thank you, Madam Speaker. Half of it, for, just conclude. Thank you. Mm. That, that should be headed by foreign affairs, those negotiations, because they were relating to uh, states. We were expecting that the senior minister, Honorable Kutesa, would be the one to go and lead those negotiations. He did not go. He delegated me to represent the ministry. And when I got there, the difficulty was how would I then, a minister of state, and still now, how would I be, <laughs> how would I sit at, at, at the front of the negotiating table and the senior colleague sits at the back? When I got there, I said, Madam, I have these instructions, but protocol demands that you sit here where you have been and you continue with the negotiations and I shall report. She said, no, the instructions are very clear. It doesn't matter. My son, he used to call me Mutabanyi, in spite of the fact that the age difference is very small. He say, she said, I will sit behind you and support you. And the meeting went on and uh, as a consequence of that discussion, we had another meeting in Entebbe where, again, she sat at the back as I signed on behalf of the government of Uganda the meeting, the, the summit, the, the, the agreement that we, we signed in Entebbe. Thank you very much. I want to thank the president for according this lady a state funeral. Mm, it is a big statement. Official barrier, not state. Official? Official, Official. yes. Honorable Thank you. Wakavulindi, two minutes, then Remigio, Ulogorovi, Monica, then uh, Nyakecho, Dokoro, close with the Chinyamatama. Uh, thanks very much, Madam Speaker, Honorable Members and fellow mourners. The country has lost a leader and a community leader. Madam Speaker, to me, the late Honorable Maria was a sister, a mother, a friend, and a uniting factor. I've known the late since early 80s. As close fr family friends, I recall even during my wedding, one of the daughters who was seated there, a younger engineer, with the flower girl of my wedding. We have been so close and I came to learn that Honorable Maria took politics as a tool for a purpose, not death and life. To be brief, Madam Speaker, when Honorable Maria crossed from DP to NRM, some of us who were so close he had a big challenge. He has an uncle who is seated here, the prince, a strong, deep person. The discussion we had with her, how, how are you going to tell the uncle that you have crossed to an area? And she said, I have not abandoned those people, but I have just crossed for a purpose. And it, to me, that was a learning lesson. Some politicians take politics 
as decent life. And even when we could meet the younger boys in Natete, our words were clear. I have not abandoned you, but I want to tell you how the country is supposed to move. And that was Maria. She was so objective that if she was to guide you, she will tell you what is going to build you, but not what is going to, to just please you. Right Honorable Speaker, we have lost a colleague. As I said, a uniting factor, very rare. Some people who came here and spoke talked about being a uniting factor in Rakai. We all come from Rakai and Kakuto. But there was so much politics in that area. And the late Maria standing alone with the late Pintos, the Brigadier Kayanjas, and other men could convince them and we take a decision. I don't want to take so much words. My colleagues have talked about the late Maria. Maria may uh, so rest in eternal peace. Thank you. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, on behalf of the people of Pian and uh, Parliament Pension Fund, I extend my condolences to the family of uh, Maria Mutagamba. Maria approached us through her daughter two weeks ago to assist her in the treatment. Unfortunately, Madam Speaker, because of the law we have, the problem of getting clearance from the Uganda Medical Board has brought us to this situation. Maria has not been sick just for last week. She was in touch with us, and especially with her daughter. And I think there is a problem, Madam Speaker, we have raised many times. The issue of getting clearance from the Uganda Medical Board, because the law says before you can pass money for our medical bills, you must get clearance from the Uganda Medical Board. And we have reached this point, just with life with your deed and many others, without getting that clearance. We need to look into this matter very seriously. Number two, Madam Speaker and colleagues, is I am just, I feel a bit uh, pain because whereas as parliamentary pension fund we were not able to come in, at the level of Honorable Maria Mutagamba, I'm wondering, it, is, it was again for us to run around to inform government that you know that a senior minister, a former minister is sick. At what point does government, that what Kao Anifa Koya has been saying, at what point does our government, my party, come in to look at these issues? Whereas we are paying tribute now, it took some time because they were planning to go to India. We were visiting, I get to talk to the chief whip and find a way to intervene. But uh, unfortunately, a lot of senior people that were supposed to be met were not available. And it, I'm really paying. The only thing could do is to pray and see what to do. Some of these things, uh, they look simple, but it, for, for the family, because your pension fund is, is, is allowed to pay some of these bills, but the law is, becomes complicated and you really get stuck. So, Madam Speaker, I think very soon, uh, as parliamentary, uh, chairman of parliamentary pension scheme, I would want to propose some amendments to our law so that maybe through the, like what NSSF has done, they have uh, hired uh, service of uh, expert of certain hospitals to give clearance on some of these. Has done what? You explained that last point. Madam Speaker, the NSSF has had the same problems. What they have done is that they have actually sourced uh, pre-qualified uh, respective uh, institutions, hospitals, private hospitals, and senior doctors. Who can give an opinion on the status of uh, their, one of their staff, or, or their staff, and based on that written information from the uh, pre-qualified service provider, they are able to treat their people immediately and very fast. And I think as an institution, as parliament, we should also go that way. We should find our own pre-qualified medical service providers who can give us an opinion so that we can intervene and respond to our members' needs. Ask when and when the need arises. Madam Speaker, that would be my prayer to this house. I am making a, a, a biannual report as commanded by our law in a few weeks, and I would want to put in those prayers these amendments to our law so that it can allow us to serve our members because they have their money there and they deserve to, to access services from that money, not to go for us to pay after they have gone. Thank you. 
Thank you, Honourable. As Mr. Rogovi comes, I just want to report that the Parliamentary Commission met yesterday, and one of the decisions we took is to invite the Joint Medical Board to come and meet the Commission to see how we can resolve the issue of clearances, because it is really very frustrating. Secondly, I'm sending the backbench commissioners to the National Assembly of Tanzania because they do have a program uh, collaborating hospitals outside the country. Uh, so I want the members to go and establish how they do it and then come and see how we can do it because we are very frustrated. We are very frustrated and pained. Honorable Gorobi, then Monica. Uh, thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker, for giving me this opportunity uh, to pay tribute uh, to my departed friend, Honorable Maria Mutagamba. For me, I just want to give personal testimony of a person who has been a mother. You know, there are people we call mothers of the nation who are actually not mothers of the nation. This one was a true mother. Before I became a member of parliament, I was a simple civil servant. And I walked to her office because we had a terrible need, a water crisis in our district. And uh, as a person coming from the area, I thought that I had a duty to assist the community. So a simple civil servant worked at lunchtime because I would not be allowed to go during working hours. I get to her office. And remember, a simple civil servant would not be allowed to access a minister anyhow. I get to her office, and she was having lunch the secretary allowed me in. And I told her about the problem in our district, Kayunga, of a water crisis. Immediately, she responded by saying, I'll provide seven boreholes to your district. And indeed, she told me to come back the following day she assigned an engineer. We went, started surveying different areas in order to drill boreholes. And for the record, I felt that, uh, Madam Speaker, I should mention these areas because the people of those areas were so grateful because they were in a crisis. And this has to be remembered. The people of Kayunga asked me to extend this message uh, to the bereaved family. Honorable Monica Onyakecho, then uh, Commissioner, and then uh, Madam. Madam Speaker, I rise to pay tribute to a great woman. I think her story can be summarized as a life of overcoming barriers and breaking ceilings. As the very first woman to get her first class from Rakai, I think, and also in Uganda during that time when education for the girl child was a very big challenge. And uh, tracing her journey up to parliament, she was, able, she, she was able to stay here, I think, for more than three terms, serving in uh, very high offices. More importantly, Madam Speaker, the record, the legacy that uh, the late has left with us as women leaders is very, very important, and I celebrate her life even in her demise. Right, Honorable Speaker, I think that it is in her time that uh, as uh, a country we were able to reduce um, or increase the access of water coverage in the country from about 35% uh, in 1996 to now what we have over 86% in the country. And therefore we celebrate her as a great leader, not just a leader but one of great legacies. Madam Speaker, as a district where I come from, Kumi district, is now going to be able to get connected on the water supply. As a district, we are very 
had water, had, had pressed a district. And so I think in her time, she was able to negotiate that World Bank contract uh, in terms of the partnership that we have to be able to connect water to our district. I know that my colleagues will not get that opportunity to say that tribute to her. But as the people of Kumi, we want to celebrate her life, her legacy, and also really uh, testify that we are beneficiaries of her good service in terms of access of water in the country. Madam Speaker, I also want to pay tribute to the late in the sense that she managed to humanize the Minister of Tourism because initially that ministry was not associated with any success. But when she started the beauty pageant, a lot of times we associate those beauty pageants as uh, ways where women are, you know, showcasing nakedness and all that. But because of this particular turnaround, beauty pageants now in Uganda attract more respect and decency associated to them. And uh, it has not just ended at that, but it has taken our country higher in terms of promoting our legacy and promoting our tourism sector. Madam Speaker, before I joined Parliament, we would look around for women leaders, great women leaders in the women's movement. And the name that would strongly come is hers, Maria, Maria Mutagamba. And in essence, for me, her life can be summarized as that she has broken ceilings, she has overcome so many barriers, but also her life was a life of a giant, you know, strides of a, 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 a lioness, but which are very soft and yet very resilient and very strong. We look at her life as a life of humility, a trait that I value, a trait that I associate myself with, and I believe that uh, many members were able to interact with her and learn one or two things. Humility, but very committed, very firm, and very strong on what she was uh, doing and believed in. I celebrate her life as a great woman, an extraordinary woman that has walked our country's uh, paths and has left a very great legacy. Uh, okay. Thank you. No, no, no. We are, we are near the Kenya Uganda border. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for this great opportunity. Madam Speaker, on, the, on behalf of the people of Toro District, I would like to extend my sincere cond and heartfelt condolences to the family of the gallant woman, the late Maria Tagamba. I remember, Madam Speaker, when I just joined the Ninth Parliament. One day I was moving in the corridor and I was shocked to look at, to see a lady who looked exactly like my late mother. I stopped looked at her and said, his mommy in this parliament. And every other time I would meet her, she would really remind me of her. And because of that, I held her in very high regard and with a lot of respect. And I would always remember the talk of discipline my mother kept instilling in me every time I saw her. So she really left a mark in my heart. And that is why I want to thank you for allowing me at least say a word as we bid farewell to her. Madam Speaker, I will also want to give the family only this verse of the Bible. Let them, it's Ecclesiastes 3, chapter 3. It says there is time for everything really in summary. From verse 1 onwards. There is time for everything. There is time for us to be happy. There is time for sorrow. There's time for somebody to live and a time to die. So it should not come as a shock to them because this is bound to happen once you're a human being. And I would like you to, to take heart. But above all, I want to thank God and I want to thank her for the distinguished, distinguished service she rendered to this country. I remember when she would wear this, the, her, her attire in the Uganda flag while promoting the tourism industry, especially in those beauty pageants of theirs. It, to me, it was a very beautiful thing because very many of us would fear dressing up in those attires she would wear. But it left a mark, and because of that, I think the tourism industry was able to move from where it, it was at that time to where it is today. And I think the ministers who came after her should really take her example of how leadership should be placed 
when you're given a position of responsibility. Take certain things seriously. And, you know, leave a mark like she has. Today, people are talking about the water and sanitation ministry. Madam, Madam, Madam Speaker, how I wish you would have something similar to the Rural Electrification Network. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, to give me an opportunity to pay tribute to my dear sister and friend, Honorable Maria Mutagambwa. Right Honorable Speaker, there are common statements that there are people who rise from grass to grace. And one would have expected that you reach a position of grace after you have eaten grass. But I want to stand here to testify that I am made, I'm very proud to have associated with uh, Honorable Maria Mutagambwa. He was a man, a woman with excellent uh, background in terms of academic uh, studies and exposures. She had everything she needed to be an expert wherever she was. So Maria Mutagamba does not fall in the category of from grass to grace, but she had always been grace, grace, and grace. And we want to thank God for that. As a woman, I look at Maria Mutagamba with a lot of pride. She looked after her family, she cared for her husband, and she was mindful of her responsibility as a leader. At no time did she reach a, cross, a crossroad and said, I cannot manage my household affair. So this is something that we women of today who are in leadership should be mindful of the fact that being in leadership doesn't mean that you look back or you turn your back to your family or you become too busy for your, for your husband or too busy for your children. Maria Mutagambwa was never too busy for her family, and I can testify to that. I came to know her in the Constituent Assembly, right honorable speaker. And in fact, I was amazed, and I've been amazed to hear members say she crossed from where to where. Maria Mutagambwa never crossed because that was a no-party system. We all operated under no party system. So whoever has said Maria Mutagamba crossed, please, you have to repent and uh, reverse your statement. Because there was no party, we were all under no party, no party system. It was a monolithic political statement. It was all embracing, all encompassing, and all that. And that's where Maria Mutagamba performed. And that's why most of us performed. And we all articulated matters of national importance, and that's where we converged. Of course, in our articulation, there were some people who were very strong on multipartism, and there were others who were very strong on continuation of monolithism. But you can never say, Maria Mutagamba, cross to the NRM. There was no particular NRM then. There was a system which was monolithic, which belonged to all of us, and nobody should own the victory that NRM as a monolithic system gained as the gain for the NRM of today. That was then. So the excellent thing I said in the CA, it was attributed to that monolithic system, not to the NRM system. So right, Honorable Speaker, I stand here to say that uh, Maria Mutagamba who was my friend, she was the company manager for Dr. Paul Semogerere. And as the, and as the manager, as the commissioner, let me just... <laughs> half a minute to conclude. <laughs> right, Honorable Speaker, just, just half a minute. Right, Honorable Speaker, Maria Mutagamba, as the manager of the campaign in 1996, she did an excellent planning an execution of our plans. It was only when we reached in the West that things became difficult. That the DP started complaining that why is it that UPC is stealing the limelight? 
And, and we didn't know what to say. So we said, okay, you do what you can. So when we arrived in Busenyi, DP had failed to find a venue. So for us, with our smart method of doing things, we found a venue. And we had an excellent campaign. So Maria Mutagambwa remained, you know, a, 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 a uniting factor. She never looked at anything with a sour taste in her mouth. And that is what I remember her for, right honorable speaker. So I want, to, I want to reiterate what the speaker said. Members, we are very concerned the way our colleagues die in a manner that can cause us pain. We, want, we know that everybody is born to die. But we want somebody to die for a good cause. So we are trying to find ways of putting a system where your health situation can be evaluated and assessed so that we can take action while you are still strong. And that's what we are trying to do. And you know when you are a cook, don't expect me to serve food when I've just started cooking. So we are praying that uh, in future we are trying our best through the speaker and the leadership to make sure that we take care of our colleagues because this kind of thing can make us feel guilty that maybe there's something we could have done to keep her to live longer than she has done. Really, I want to thank God for the life of Maria and I want to tell the family, her time has come. Let nobody tell you that something happened to cause her death. Her time has come and it is good for her to die in this peace, in this kind of environment. May God rest a soul in eternal peace. No, it's your matama. Thank you so the much. Success right MP. The successor MP to Maria. Uh, thank you so much, right honorable speaker. Uh, honorable members, I want to say thank you first of all for the support you've given unto us as the people of Rakai as uh, the late family, we are really appreciative of what you've done for us since the time she went up to now. You're with us and we want to promise you that we are going to stay strong and keep her legacy. Uh, I have a lot to talk about the late because she was a leader, a mother, a library to Rakai, to girls, to women, to activists in this nation and the world. I want to tell you that I am who I am because of Honorable Mtagamba. When I was growing up as a child, my dad told me that I'm not going to sell my cows for nothing, but I want you to be like right Honorable Mtagamba. She has never disappointed us in Raqqa and she didn't disappoint this government and the nation at large. That's why you have never had her name in any scandal. That's why you see that everyone is talking about her as a God-fearing person. There are those that are God-fearing in talking, but you look at the actions and they are not. She has been an exemplary leader. When I was going to campaign, she told me that she was very happy to see me as a young girl to join politics. She told me she joined politics when she was young and it was too challenging. But it, she told me, just pray to God and keep your word and you'll make it till the end. I'm happy that she's made it till the end. I'm happy that she saw me through, replace her. When I want, she told me, your very many young girls have groomed very many young girls. Come up, tell your people, tell the young girls that have stayed there that want to join the race to come to my office and I talk to them like I've talked to you. I called them indeed and they went there. She sat us down and told us not to fight for politics. Told us that that's why she groomed us and she created way for us. She sat and saw us through and here I am. I, 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 I don't know what to say. She called me after I was sworn in and she told me Chinyamatama I set a challenge for you. You have to be a strong woman. You have to be God-fearing. And above all, serve people, don't serve political interests. She taught me to be an objective leader. I am challenged and I pray to God 
that I keep my word with her. Okay. One minute, because you are the successor MP. I want, to, I want to call upon all honorable members and the right honorable speaker that please be there for us tomorrow. We are already strong enough to receive you. Uh, there is free transport for all the members. Thank you so much. God bless you. May her soul rest in peace. Now, on our members, normally we run the tribute after about 6 p.m., but uh, I was advised that this family wants to go when it's still light. They are going to, by road to Rakai. They want to get out of Masaka when it's still light. So I really regret that I cannot uh, give that time. However, I want to thank the members of the family who are here. Marianne Mutagamba, the daughter, she's here. Martin Mutagamba is also here, the son. Michael Mutagamba is here. Hilda Msuvire, our own, who is uh, on the Public Service Commission, welcome her. Prince uh, Cesar Rukaru, Mr. Chavagu, her brother. And then they are, her in-laws, they come from Machakos in Kenya. They have traveled uh, this morning to, to be with us today. Now, Prime Minister, uh, you know, each time we have distributes, we talk about health insurance. When will it happen? I'm saying this because a time came when uh, Honorable Mutagamba didn't know what to do about her health. On the State of the Nation address, as I was seeing of the President, someone whispered to me that you are, you are here, but uh, Honorable Mutagamba is not well. She's at the case clinic, so I said, okay, I'll find time and go there. I didn't go on the, on the 7th, because we were preparing for the budget. On the 8th, as we, after the, the, the budget speech, I told the President that uh, I've got this information that Maria is not well, she's in case clinic, said, yes, I've also heard, we are going to do something about it. Then, in between, Honorable Habba Tariko, uh, the MP for uh, Sorority Municipality, came with a daughter to my office and said, uh, Maria feels abandoned, that she really feels abandoned, she's sick, and uh, Yuri does not know. So I said, I will come, I'll come and visit. So after a day or two, I went there, I spent some time with her, and then, uh, but then she ordered me to pray before I left to pray for them. Normally people pray for me, but now she ordered me to pray and I prayed for her. But uh, she was really in bad shape and, and, and not sure how she was going to manage. So I told her, let me take your medical forms. I drove to my house. I wrote a letter in the night. The following day I drove to state house down without an appointment and gave the letter to the president to say this is uh, what is required for Mwana Mutagamba. Of course, that's now water under, under the bridge. But the point is, she didn't know where to go for, to get support. That's the question we all have. She was not in the office. She was out of office. What does a Ugandan do with, who has no support of the, maybe the backing of a ministry or the backing of the Joint Medical Board? You know, I, I wish we could find a, a solution for... You know, it happens all the time we speak. I really hope that at some stage we shall find a solution as a country to that situation by getting a proper insurance for, for our people. Otherwise, uh, I want to... Uh, oh, on, on, thank, thank you, Madam, on, on member, thank no, you, no, Madam Speaker. No, on our members, I, I want to put the question that the question be now put. Those in favor say the contrary, no. It's a, the question is that this house will be a tribute to the Honorable Mutagamba as proposed by the Prime Minister. Those in favor say the contrary, no. I have now on a member uh, clerk, you are directed to extract the Hansard uh, and the tribute, uh, text of the tribute, and give it to Honorable uh, Maria's family. And as you have been informed, uh, there will be transport tomorrow to go to Gamba in uh, Kakuto for, for the burial. Item six. Item 6, the anthems in verse order. Please rise.
Please remain rising as the chairs can the chamber. You may resume your seats. Item number seven in the other paper, adjournment. Members, I want to thank you very much for your time and your patience. Uh, House will be adjourned to tomorrow until 2 p.m. in the afternoon. House adjourned. <laughs>